When have you seen the real world hit a spoiled brat? When the high school principal's daughter who previously got away with all kinds of garbage behavior, vandalism, dinking, major bullying, got caught vandalizing a lecture hall in uni she was unceremoniously dumped and banned. Parents whined for months on FB about their poor baby's unfair treatment and the fact that her applications to other unis were being denied. These parents are exactly why children turn into even adults. My ex was a prime example. He was always getting in trouble, in and out of juvie slash jail don't judge me. I was 16 and thought dating an older guy that was rough around the edges was a good idea. Obviously, I was very wrong. Every time this guy would do something terrible, his family and parents would blame it on other people or his friends or he was having a bad day or he's such good hearted person, he didn't mean it. Have you ever seen on those murder shows where the victim's family and the defendant's family are at odds and the defendant's family is saying that the victim's family is ruining their child's life because they were wrongly accused? That's exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter what they're accused of or what the evidence says, their crazy, dysfunctional family will always stand by their side and reward and have an excuse for their terrible behavior. Spending $50 on food a day is not normal. College girl got cut off from her parents, drinking and not going to class, and had to get a job. She put on Facebook about how she's gonna go hungry and needs money. People offered her food and to make her dinner. She said, that's okay I just need about $40 to get through the day I don't like to grocery shop. Edit, if you're wondering how she went through that much a day she always ate out at a restaurant and had Starbucks twice a day. Add in snacks and alcohol and there's $40 in one day. $40 can feed you for a week if you grocery shop. A college student could make that last a while longer I'd say. Sorry about the length. I was a school bus driver in the 70s. During height of court ordered busing, so I ferried poor kids to the rich side of town, then rich kids the other way. Lots of entitled brats but one stands out. Super entitled kid, constantly defying rules. Eventually I caught him, with too many witnesses, attempting to set a bus seat on fire with his lighter. School officials were called. Hearing with officials and rich dad and he's banned from all buses rest of semester. Dad offers to pay for the damage and quietly accepts the punishment. Then comes the surprise. Next morning when I arrive at 6 am to clean my bus, regular task every morning, rich kid and dad are standing there. Dad introduces me to my new personal bus cleaner for the rest of the year. He brings kid every morning and forces him to wash and clean the floors on my bus before taking him on to his school. By end of year, entitled kid is actually working hard and being friendly. We're getting along pretty well and I help him out sometimes so he can get on to school. Kid turns out okay when all is over. Good move by his dad. TL, DR, Professor Fails Spoiled Son. Back in engineering school, one of my classmates was the son of one of our professors. Now, this professor was a really nice dude. He paid attention to his students, his classes were fun and he rarely failed anyone. His son, on the other hand, was a total asshat. Rude and nasty and would always brag about how his dad was a highly senior professor with tenure. You know who my dad is, right? Was literally his catchphrase. He wasn't even a good student. We ranked GPAs out of 10 and he was a 4. This professor actually taught a very specialized course so we only had about two courses from him in our entire time at the school. This course in our fifth semester was a bit complicated. If you didn't do regular study, it was easy to fail but if you practiced the stuff, passing it was a breeze. So finals come around and Ashat is out there bragging that he didn't need to study because his dad will pass him anyway. He took this confidence all the way to the exam hall. And then the results were out. He had scored 7 out of 100. We know because the professor called us all to the classroom and displayed his answer sheet on the projector. According to him, he was the third student who had failed in his 20 year teaching career and he couldn't be more disappointed that it was his son. The amount of verbal ass hooping ass hat received was enough to have him quivering like a wet cat in front of everyone. The next time he pulled the, do you know my dad? Card, the standard answer he received was, the one who failed you. He stopped pretty soon after that. He retook the exam the following year, failed again and had to drop out. Wherever he is today, I hope he learned his lesson. 
My ex-best friend was raised spoiled. His family wasn't very rich but they still always tried their best to get him everything he asked for and never taught him to take responsibility for his mistakes. He'll write a list of the things he pulled after leaving school. Got three strikes on his license and lost it by. Running a red light, wasn't his fault because there weren't many cars around, speeding through a school zone, wasn't his fault because there were no kids around even though he was going so fast that he would have been breaking the limit if the school zone limit wasn't in place getting pulled over and one of his passengers wasn't wearing a seat belt, was his fault for not wearing it. Quit his job because he wanted more time to skate. Did this by going to his exes and sleeping with her instead of going to work then bragging about it on Facebook. Centerlink refuses to pay him because he's not even trying to get a job and no place will hire him because of his track record. A 14-year-old girl at a party, he was 21, somehow managed to get away with that. Also this wasn't some massive drinking party it was a family barbecue. Assaulted a bouncer at a nightclub and then the police who tried to arrest him. Spent a week in jail for that. Moved to Melbourne then Sydney and ended up being homeless for a couple years and is currently homeless in Germany. We'll add more when I remember it. Edit, ok I remembered a few more. A, another time he was skateboarding in a Hungry Jack's car park and a policeman asked him to move on. Not sure how it got to this but he ended up assaulting the policeman and taken to the station. His family had a friend who was a cop and stuck his neck out to get him released and he then tried to sue the cop who arrested him for assault. Also he had a 15 year old kid with him at the time who was drunk and high so as well as assault he was facing a charge of supplying to minors. B, caught a train from Sydney to Melbourne and didn't pay. Thought he got away with it until his mum got a $350 fine in the mail, he never officially moved out. She demanded he pay it immediately. Drove down for the day to ask for money with his girlfriend and his mother reluctantly gave it to him. A few months later his mother gets a bill for $960 in the mail because he never used the $350 money to pay the original bill. His mother tries calling him but can't get through for days so she calls his girlfriend and she says they broke up a week after that visit and she has no idea where he is. See, also on that same train ride to Sydney his friends abandoned him and he freaked out and got arrested. I took a screenshot of the convo and posted on r slash insane people Facebook a few years ago and will post the link once I find it. Edit, here it is. D. He has posted a whole bunch of pathetic Facebook posts that either beg people for sympathy or money. Unfortunately he deleted these so I can't find them. When I was working at a public library, we had a few local celebrities come in from time to time. Most of them were nice, but one had a real stick up his arse. He would bitch about having to stand in line, and about late fees, and about everything else. We would just say, sorry those are the rules, or, thank you for being patient, even though he wasn't. One day, he and I were apparently both having a bad day, and when I told him there was a limit on how many DVDs or video games he could check out at a time, he slammed his hands on the desk and raged, do you know who I am? This is a grown ass man, mind, I was a little college student who barely looked old enough to drive. I was sick of his low-key bullying, so I just looked at him and said, yes, I do, Mr. X, and the rules still apply to you. Which of these would you like me to put back? He was stunned. I don't think anyone had ever actually told him that the rules for everyone else did in fact apply to him as well. He was a little nicer after that. Not a lot nicer, but still. On the subject of college kids, I went to an Ivy League school in the town I grew up in. Being an Ivy, there were a ton of spoiled rich around. One of my high school friends pledged a rich fraternity, and while he was cool, his frat brothers were horrible. During one winter break, my friend decided to throw a townie party at the frat as a pseudo HS reunion. One of his frat brothers was still in town, so he decided to attend the party too. I had seen this guy at a few parties during the year, and he was the worst kind of frat douche. Harassing women left and right, drinking to excess and trying to start fights, and bullying everyone with do you know who my family is, lines. While that kept most of us students from hitting him because we had something to lose, it turns out the same doesn't fly with a bunch of big angry farm boys who weren't used to taking from a preppy douche with a superiority complex. I ended that night by peeling a few of my former HS football teammates off this guy before they killed him for throwing a drink at one guy and slapping another girl's ass.